Asking what's that smell can be both uh, comical and disconcerting. But if you find yourself asking that question several times a day, it could be a warning sign of something more serious. Olfactory hallucinations happen most often with women between the ages of 15 and 30. Seventy-six percent of pregnant women experience phantom smells. The symptoms start slowly and then increase and in some cases requires surgery. And joining us with what you need to know is emergency room RN, Alice Benjamin. Good to see you. Hi, hello. Good morning. So um, this can be serious, actually. What? First of all, let's talk about what is the medical term. Right. So the medical term for this is phantosmia. So it's an olfactory hallucination, as you said, sometimes referred to as phantom smells. We're smelling something that's not there. But mind you, these often aren't pleasant smells. Mm. Um, these are things that, are sm that smell like burnt toast, burning rubber, um, molding smells, so things that are very obnoxious. So, um, and unfortunately, this is something that's very difficult to diagnose. Um, it's very uncommon. However, one to two Amer percent of Americans do report some type of smell disorder, and this condition attributes to 10 to 20 percent of that. And so, it, I mean, someone will be in a group and say, do you smell that? And everyone's looking at the person like, right. No, what are you talking about? Is that kind of how? Right, absolutely. So you're smelling things that aren't there. Now, the confusing thing is like, well, why is this happening? Why am I yeah. smelling these things? And it's really a biochemical um, condition. There's something that's going on. It's something that could be uh, central to just, or localized to your nose, mm -hmm. your nasal passageway. There could be uh, polyps or problems um, in the passageway. Maybe you're, you smoke or you have frequent sinus infections and that's causing problems there or it could be something that's more central to the brain. Oh. And so it could be an uh, underlying symptom of more dangerous conditions. Mm. So are you supposed to go to a doctor if you're smelling strange smells, uh, what, on an often, like pretty often, or how does that Right, work? so this condition, it's not life-threatening, um, but it is something that can significantly impact your quality of life. And it, unfortunately, it takes a person anywhere from one to seven physicians to get a true final diagnosis. Wow. So it's difficult to diagnose. Mm -hmm. So recommendations that you go straight to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, because mm -hmm. they're going to be most familiar with what to do in this situation and how to diagnose it. And so once you are diagnosed and someone says, yeah, that's what you have, yes. what are the treatments? Well, there are several treatments, so depending on what is causing the underlying problem. So what they'll want to do is they're going to want to interview you to see, uh, did you have a in head injury? Do you smoke? Get some you know, idea of what could be causing this. They're going to want to look into your nasal passageway to see if there's polyps or there's tumors, because maybe it's something that requires surgery and you can remove it. Mm -hmm. If we can't find that, it might move to a head CT, head MRI, um, and then there might be a tumor there, or you might oh, have been God. some, uh, yeah, and that would require removal. Or it could be that maybe you have epilepsy or you've had some head trauma that is causing um, the problems with your nose and those senses getting interpreting the smell to your brain. So the idea is that the brain is saying, hey, th that smells like this, but it's, it's really not that. Absolutely. Yeah. There's like a crossage of passages there. So what we're smelling is being interpreted incorrectly by the brain. And so we're identifying it as an incorrect smell. Now, this is something, again, that can impact your life. So what we smell influences what we eat. So if you can't smell properly, mm. you might have a decreased appetite and you might lose weight mm. or you might your food might no longer be flavorful. So you're going to tack on um, seasoning. Yes, yeah. because yeah. your smell and your taste buds are, are very close. They very closely work together. So um, sometimes if you have if you think you have a smelling disorder, it actually will impact what you're eating. Wow. And remind us that the medical term is? Phantosmia. Phantosmia. All yeah. right. Good scrabble word. Thank you. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Alice Benjamin, an emergency room RN and clinical nurse specialist. You can follow her on social media and check out her website, asknursealice.com. Thanks again. Thanks.